Welcome to part two of the textured shawl cowl. So far you should have finished the first section in welting along with the left edge triangle and you've added the new increase and the box stitch. So you're now ready to start adding another increase point and a new stitch. Your shawl should look something like the shawl that you're seeing in the photograph now. I'm going to be knitting on a small sample to show you the next steps. So I'm starting here with my new point that I'm going to start increasing. I need to start with knitting three stitches so we're still keeping the garter stitch edge. So we knit three, yarn forward to increase, knit one, yarn forward to make our new increase point, knit one, yarn between the needles, slip one purl wise, yarn back and add your stitch marker. So this is the same process as you previously did when you made your previous increase point. And now I'm going to start knitting over my stitch pattern and we need to maintain the stitch pattern in the same sequence as we previously had. So I'm just following, I was working the box stitch so I'm just following the box stitch as was previously set. So you do need to be aware of looking at your knitting and your stitches and you will then come to your increase point for your left hand edge of your box stitch which you will continue to increase. So again you'll do your increase and there will be a stitch marker two stitches away so you do your increase, knit one, yarn forward, slip one, yarn back and with you there should be a stitch marker but I've just got one stitch. So that's introduced my new increase point so I'm now going to work back to where my stitch marker was. Still keeping in pattern so again I've got to do my slip stitch section here on the edge of the increase point. There's my increase so knit the increase and then make sure that I'm still working in the correct stitch pattern. So again with you you will have knitted all the way to the end to the garter stitch edge, done your increase at the edge, turned, knit three, yarn over increase, knit to the stitch marker, do your next section of welting and then your box stitch section and then when you come to your new stitch marker we're going to slip the stitch marker to the right hand needle, knit the next stitch, bring the yarn forward between the needles, slip the next stitch, take the yarn back, knit the yarn over and now we're going to be starting our new stitch pattern. This is hurdle stitch, hurdle rib. So the first two rows are knit so I'm just going to knit to the last three stitches, yarn forward and knit my last three stitches. So hurdle rib is a four row repeat and it's knit two rows and then work knit one purl one rib for two rows. So I'm just going to demonstrate the next two rows just to get the stitch pattern established. So we knit three to start with, yarn forward at the edge and now we need to check with the instructions or your chart to make sure that we are working in the correct sequence and 
we're actually going to start with a purl one. So in order to do the purl one after the yarn over, we go all the way around the needle, purl one, knit one, purl one. And I'm working to two stitches before the stitch marker. So knit one, yarn forward for my increase, knit the next stitch, yarn between the needles, slip with the next stitch purlwise, take the arm back, slip the stitch marker to the right needle and then continue in the pattern that's already been established across to the end of your row. So I just need to get across these few stitches and then we'll do row four of this particular pattern. As you're working across, remember when you come to your increase points in your other two sections, you're still going to do your increase, knit one, yarn forward, slip the stitch, yarn back, slip the stitch marker and continue across the row. So again, I'm going to work in pattern back to my new stitch marker point. So again, I need to knit that stitch, yarn forward, slip purlwise, yarn back, knit the increase and then work in the stitch pattern, which in this one is purl two, knit two, on this row, across the box stitch section of my sample here. get to the end here. I've got to the stitch marker, slip the stitch marker, move my yarn so that I can knit the first stitch after the marker, yarn forward, slip the next stitch purlwise, yarn back, knit the increased stitch and now again this row I've got to maintain my knit one purl one rib so I have to do a purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Now I've got to my last three stitches and I could just do a yarn over but because this is right on the edge just doing a normal yarn over can be a little bit short so this is where, as I did in the previous video demonstration, I did what's called a reverse yarn over by taking the yarn to the back and then coming from the back to the front over the right needle and knit the next three stitches. What you have to remember if you use a reverse yarn over, and I only do that on the edges because we want to keep as much distance in here as possible is that when I do the next row which will actually be a knit row I'm going to knit my first three yarn forward for the increase at the beginning of the row this is my reverse yarn over I can either leave it as it is and just knit into the back of it or I can turn it on my needle like that and then work it as a normal knit stitch. So whichever is easiest for you, it'll be fine. But by doing the reverse yarn over, it just gives these edge stitches a little bit more room for when we come to stretching out the shawl at the end. Again, I've got one more stitch before I reach my two stitches before the marker, yarn forward or yarn over, knit one, yarn forward, 
slip one yarn back, slip the stitch marker and then carry on working. So you're going to carry on working in the new hurdle rib pattern on your new section which is section three until you've worked the number of rows that are required for the size of the shawl that you're making. And we'll come back shortly to then add the new increase point and section four. See you soon. So you should now have completed the hurdle rib section, the number of rows that you've chosen for the size of the shawl that you're going to make. So we're now ready to add another increase point and a new stitch pattern. The new stitch pattern is called nubby stitch and is a variation on a knit one purl one rib. I'm going to start by making the new increase point in the same way as we have done before. Now if you remember at the end of the previous row I did a reverse yarn over so I need to either turn my stitch or work it as it is. And as you can see I've just turned it. So I'm going to start my new section with an edge yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn forward, slip one, yarn back and then I'm going to add a new stitch marker. And now I need to continue across my knitting. I've only got a small amount of hurdle rib here, but you would obviously have the whole of your shawl. So you do have to make sure that you keep in stitch pattern in each section. So the first row of the new section of hurdle rib will be knit because that particular stitch pattern is knit two rows and then work knit one purl one rib for two rows. And I still have my increase at the end of the hurdle rib section, which is two stitches before the stitch marker. Yarn forward to do a increase, knit one, yarn forward, slip one, yarn back, move the stitch marker, and then you would continue on across your box stitch, and then your welting and your garter stitch. So now I'm coming back on the wrong side row. So again I have to work back across my hurdle rib. So again I did my knit one, yarn forward slip one, knit the increase stitch and then knit the rest of the row in this section up to the next stitch marker which was the new one that we just put in. So again my new stitch marker, so I slip my stitch marker, knit the next stitch, bring my yarn forward, slip the next stitch, take my yarn back, knit the increase and then I want to do a purl one, knit one according to my pattern. So the last three stitches make my increase and knit the last three stitches. I'm going to do the next two rows of the nubby stitch because nubby stitch is a four row repeat. So again we work the first three stitches, increase, and at the moment I want to remain in a knit one per one rib pattern so I'm going to knit one per one knit one per one and that brings me up to the two stitches before my stitch marker again I'm going to do a yarn over at the increase point Bring the yarn forward, slip that stitch, 
take the arm back, slip my stitch marker, moving the tail out of the way. And now I need to again continue in the correct sequence over my hurdle rib, which will be knit one per one, across to two stitches before the stitch marker. So once you've started a new stitch pattern, you'll be following the chart for the new stitch pattern, or the written instructions, but you have to remember to maintain the same stitch pattern over the existing parts of the shawl. So again, I'm two stitches before the stitch marker, bring the yarn forward and over, yarn over, knit one, yarn forward and slip one, yarn back, slip the stitch marker and continue working across the row. And then if we just work back again, so it's this fourth row on the nubby stitch that changes the position of the knits and purls. But first of all we have to cross over, work across the hurdle rib. So knit one, yarn forward, slip one, yarn back, knit the first stitch and then look at your stitch pattern in front of you so I've got here purl knit purl knit so that's what I want to work purl knit across to the other stitch marker So we're just coming up to the new stitch marker which marks the divide between the sections. Slip the stitch marker, moving the tail out of the way. Knit the first stitch, yarn forward, slip the second stitch after the marker, yarn back, knit the yarn over and now we are going to be changing our knit one purl one sequence. So if you're looking at the stitches at the moment I've got knit one purl one, knit one purl one, but I want to put a purl over the knit stitch and a knit over the purl stitch. So I'm going to be working purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, which brings me to my three edge stitches. Again, I've finished with a purl, so I'm going to do a reverse yarn over, but if you prefer, you can just do a straightforward yarn over. And then I'm going to knit the next three stitches for my edge. So those are the first, those are the four rows of the nubby stitch. So we've now got a new stitch pattern being worked in this section and the existing stitch pattern being worked in this section but continuing to increase at the left hand end. You now need to work through until you've worked there are a number of rows you're needed for your shawl in the nubby stitch and then we have one more increase to add. So I'll see you when we've got to that point. You should now have completed your nubby stitch section. So you've got your garter stitch at one end, welting, box stitch, hurdle rib, nubby stitch. And we now have our last increase point, which starts in the same way as previously. So again, we're gonna start with knit three. Again, my stitch is mounted the wrong way round because I'd finished with a purl stitch on the previous row. So I'm just going to knit through the back of it. Yarn forward, knit one, yarn forward, slip the stitch, yarn back, place a new stitch marker. And then I've got to continue keeping my nubby stitch correct. So the previous row 
I had changed the positions of the nits and pearls so on this row I need to go back so I'm actually going to start with a pearl pearl one knit one all the way across to two stitches before the stitch marker so this very last section is going to be worked in moss stitch or American seed stitch depending on which part of the globe you're from. Right I've got to the end of my section of nubby stitch I'm going to yarn over knit one, yarn forward, slip one, move the stitch, move the yarn back and again I've got to work my hurdle rib across the next group all the way to two stitches before that stitch marker. So you are your rows are getting quite long now because you have quite a few sections to work across. So again I've got to two stitches before the stitch marker, yarn forward, yarn over there, knit one, bring the yarn forward to slip one and take the yarn back, move the stitch marker and then continue across the row. So I'm just going to come back again to complete the wrong side row for the start of this new section. So again I've worked to the stitch marker, knit the first stitch after the marker, slip the next stitch with the yarn at the front, take the yarn back, knit the yarn over, knit to the next stitch marker, come to the next stitch marker, slip the stitch marker, knit the first stitch after the marker, yarn forward, slip the next stitch, yarn back, knit the yarn over, work in the correct sequence, so in this case it's purl one, knit one, So we're just coming up to our newest stitch marker and increase point. So again, slip the stitch marker, knit the first stitch, bring the yarn forward, slip the next stitch, take the yarn back, knit the increase and this time I'm going to be knitting one, purling one to line up with the moss stitch pattern that you will have written down. Again I'm going to do a reverse yarn over and then knit the last three stitches. So that's our last increase point introduced here. So you're going to carry on working in moss stitch in the same way as we've been doing before. So we'll be adding a stitch at the end at the beginning of the row every row beginning end of the row every row and then you're going to be increasing at your increase points on right side rows and this section you'll be working in moss seed stitch you continue working for the number of rows that the pattern tells you for your shawl size with this last section you're not going to work as many rows as the other sections because we're getting towards the end of the main shawl part. When you've done the number of rows required you're going to be knitting some rows over all the stitches and then we're going to be doing the finishing. So 
I'll leave you there for this part two example and we'll come back again in part three to show you how to do the edging which casts off all the stitches.